Good afternoon. Hope everybody's doing good and staying safe out there. I got uh, something I want to share. The Lord's been putting on my heart to kind of get some uh, some teaching out there in the world. And maybe you've been confused uh, like I was through a lot of my life on different things in the Bible. And uh, But in particular today, we're going to study kind of the fall of man and what it means to be saved and how do you get saved and how do you go to heaven and uh, there's uh, so many different religions out there uh, you know thousands I'm sure now thousands and thousands of different different people saying that they uh, they know the right way and um, but we got to have a final authority and we've got to have um, who's right you know and uh, God's right and so if God's right we got to go by his word and see uh, dig into it and see what it says so there's so much confusion I want to kind of study uh, with you, and maybe this will be a blessing. Maybe this will um, help some people out. Maybe they've been, you know, struggling, trying to connect the dots, or, um, you know, maybe you think that you got to be baptized or you got to do good works uh, all to, to make it to heaven. You know, I hear that a lot, you know, just I hope I make it. I hope I make it. Well, I'm hoping after this video you can know that you can go to heaven. And, um, and heaven and hell are real places, uh, and the Lord is uh, going to call his His bride home soon. And I really believe with everything going on in the world, we really are living in the last days. So I want to uh, start off with uh, a scripture here. And we're going to go to uh, 2 Corinthians 11.3. If you got a Bible, you can turn. If you don't, uh, you can just, just follow along, listen, uh, whatever whatever suits you. Um, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3, and this is going to be Paul and uh, writing for a fear of false teachers. Okay, and uh, verse 3 says, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And that's it, the simplicity. Everybody makes it so complicated, it seems like, these days. You know, you got, um, you know, Baptists and Methodists and Presbyterians and, um, you know, Catholics. And, um, I mean, just, it goes on and on. And, you know, each of them say something different. And um, I had a man that uh, the Lord put in my life when I was about 18 years old. And I'll always, uh, always be grateful for this this man that... Uh, showed me how to rightly divide the word and really got a lot of confusion out of my life. Um, I knew some things didn't sit right in my spirit. You know, I, I didn't. I knew it didn't sound right on certain things when I would see out there in the world uh, or, or certain teachers or preachers that would say certain things. And but I didn't know how to find the answer. You know, I just uh, I love the Lord and I, uh, uh, you know, love the Bible, but I didn't really know how to study didn't know how to um how to find the answers and this this man uh came into my life and really showed me a lot of different things and, and cleared it up for me and i'm hoping i can kind of return uh return the, the favor for somebody if uh you've been struggling so the bible in second timothy two fifteen it says to study and show thyself approved now uh uh, I'm going to read actually the, the rest of that verse for you. The King James Bible is the Bible, I believe, is God's pure word. And it's the only Bible out of all the versions out there that have this verse in it uh, that tells you to study. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And see, when we get into um, the different books of the Bible, you got the Old Testament and the New Testament. Well, there's different dispensations of who God's talking to. A lot of times, uh, uh, this guy that came into my life that showed me how to uh, rightly divide would use different examples that kind of made sense in, in my terms, you know. And so I used to uh, work out a bunch, and he would he would tell me, he said, now, now Jake, he said, how God does things in the, in the Bible when you rightly divide, he said, if we're out here and we're working out, he said, you want to get, you know, uh, a bigger chest he said uh, and he told me to go do he said Jake you need to do 225 five sets of 10 and so I'll say okay that that sounds like that's what I need to do but if there was a little new elementary kid or a middle school kid and he's he's seeing this big dude and he's wanting to try to you know get big too 
Well, he puts 225 on because he heard them say that's what makes your chest bigger. Well, he puts on 225 and it crushes them. Well, the man wasn't talking to him. He was talking to me. So same thing in the Bible. we got to figure out who God is talking to and how we can apply that to our lives. And, and that really in itself clears up so much um, confusion is knowing you know, who God's talking to. Let's find out about confusion. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 14.33. 1 Corinthians 14.33, and it says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. So we find out right there that God's not the author of confusion. So whatever's causing this confusion out here is not of God, because uh, he's not the author of confusion. Another good one right here is Titus 1, verse 2. And we're going to be flipping through a lot of scripture, but I'm going to try to do it uh, quickly um, so we don't, you know, I want you to be able to get all this in if you can and won't drag it out too long. Titus 1 uh, verse 2, it says, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. So here we see that God, he cannot lie. Over in Hebrews 6.18, it says, For it is impossible for God to lie. And that's, that's good stuff, man. I mean, that's, that's good. So you go... The Lord is, is not the author of confusion, and he there's no possible way for him to lie. And the uh, last one we'll look here on this is going to be Romans chapter 3 and verse 4. Romans chapter 3 and verse 4, it says, For what if some, uh, excuse me, chapter 3 verse 4, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So what that's basically saying is, you know, if someone's not speaking according to, to this word, to this Bible, uh, you know, it says, let, let God be true and every man a liar, just like it says in the text, in the scripture. What we're going to do is we want to identify what's why we need a savior and what that means and what the blood of Jesus means. And then, uh, 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 in my opinion, one of the best examples to see of how truly simple it is to have the Lord Jesus as your savior. And um, Isaiah 46.10, it says that uh, God was going to call, declare the end from the beginning. So where else better to start than the beginning? Let's turn to Genesis 1, 26, and we're going to be right around the fall of man, okay? Genesis chapter 2, verse 6, uh, excuse me, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So that's, uh, right then God created man in, in, in his image, okay? And you talk to people today and they say, well, you know, we're all made in God's image, we're all made in God's image, and, you know, uh, I, it's, that's not true. You know, unfortunately, that's not true. When the fall of man happened, and we're about to get to that in chapter three, there was a, that image was lost, and that image was lost. So we had to we have to get that image back. Now let's look over here in chapter chapter three. Uh, we're going to look at verse one. Uh, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Right there, Satan's first words as a, as a serpent is questioning God's word. Hath God said? You know, Satan's always going to attack life. And he, he says, Hath God said? Well, over here in uh, chapter 2, um, verse 16 and 17, it says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree, of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So we see what God had said. Now in chapter 3, verse 1, Satan's already questioning. He says, Hath God said? 
Well, chapter Genesis chapter 3, verse 2, let's go see what happens here. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Well, that's not what that's not a whole truth. See, see, the devil will will give you a lot of half truths. And you see a lot of the mega churches today, the big, big churches, and they they never teach you or preach to you about hell really. You know, they don't they, everybody kind of forgot about hell. You know, Christ, he preached more about hell than he ever did heaven. So uh, a lot of half truths in a lot of churches today, and they don't tell you the rest of the story, you know. So this right here in, in verse 2, when she said, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. That's the first sin of the Bible. You know, the first sin of the Bible is taken from God's word. Taken away from God's word. Very next verse, But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither ye touch it, lest ye die. There's the second sin of the Bible. Adding, adding to God's word. In verse number four, and the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. And man, you know, there's a there's a lie right there because we know they did die, but not physically right then. They died spiritually. And what's so cool was right here in uh, that that ad, that first sin of, of taking away God's word and the second one of adding to God's word. There's a lot of different spots in scripture that you can find, but one that's the very end of the book, Revelation 22, 18 and 19. I'm going to turn to that real quick just to throw that in there. It kind of really connects with declaring the end from the beginning. So let's take to chapter 22 of Revelation real quick. And let's see what God says right before the book closes here. It says, uh, chapter uh, 22, verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Notice right there in, in 18, heareth the words, okay? And then 19, take away from the words, okay? That that matches Genesis, the first sin of the Bible, and this is the last warning. I mean, that, that that is that amazing or what? You know, that's that is so cool. I always have thought that anyway. So what we got here is the the first sin was uh, God. I mean, I got uh, taken away from God's word and adding to God's word. Well, when they disobeyed the Lord, they died spiritually. See, we all have a body. I hope you can see that. Yeah. We all have a body. And soul. And the spirit. Well, when Adam and Eve sinned, they died spiritually. They had a dead spirit. You say, how do you know that? Well, I, I just looking farther in that Bible there. And, uh, if you come on to chapter 5 and verse 3. So Genesis chapter 5, verse 3. This is Adam, the descendants of Adam. And uh, I guess, hopefully that, uh, I'm looking on my screen here. Hopefully that ain't going to be all sideways like that. But I can't write backwards here. Um, 5 verse 3 says, And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. So you see there, he begot a son in his own likeness after his image. See, he had lost, he had lost the image of God when they sinned. So what happens? How do we get that image back? Well, the gospel is 1 Corinthians Fifteen, one through four. This is what Christ did. He came down, died for our sins, was buried, rose again on the third day. Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, it says as soon as you believe and trust the gospel as your only hope and your only way to salvation, he will seal you with his spirit. Okay? Your soul 
and Spirit are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And how long? You're sealed for eternity. Okay, forever. you got to get that image back that Adam lost. Let's look at a few more scriptures here to kind of show you how that plays out here. Lost my lost my spot. Second Corinthians uh, four four. It says, "In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them." So that that last part, the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God. So Christ is the image of God that Adam lost. Okay. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5.23. And this would have, I should have shown you this one a little bit earlier. But, uh, and the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that's again, spirit, soul, and body. That's three. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There's three. You know, I had that same man kind of give me an example on, I kind of, not struggled, but, you know, I just would have wanted a little bit more clearer picture on how the uh, the Trinity, you know, was. Um, and the Trinity, uh, you know, I, I believed it, and I just, I just would like to, you know, a clearer picture. So that, that helped me there, but then he said, well, Jake, think about it. He said, you know, you're a son to your parents. I'm a husband to my wife and I'm a father to my kids. Well, that's three in one. You see, it's, it's kind of almost you got to think outside of how the world wants you to see things. The world always wants physical and material, but see, God is spiritual. He, he's not He's not material. So his, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And so a lot of things is just kind of really interpreting scripture or scripture and looking at it a different way. We're going to uh, show you right here through, um, uh, let's see, where am I at? Ephesians, I want to go to Ephesians, that was a good one. Ephesians 1, 3. Excuse me, Ephesians 1, 13. This is um, Paul again, and it says, In whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. That's that seal. As soon as you believed, you saved like that instantly. As soon as you trust from the heart, not the head. See, a lot of people have head knowledge. But that heart, you've got to really make that thing personal. Christ came down and died for your sins. He came down and died for my sins. We're all sinners. Romans, after Adam lost the image, Romans 3.10 says, That is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so, I mean, everybody, there's, there's no amount of good works, there's no amount of nothing that can get you to heaven besides Jesus Christ. And when he saves you, he seals you with that Holy Spirit of promise. Isaiah, this one's one kind of a, a good one to chew on here for a second. You know, Isaiah 64, 6 says, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. So, Basically, that's saying without the Lord Jesus Christ, and you're trying to justify yourself and, and get there on your own by your good works and hoping your good deeds will outweigh your bad deeds. That he said, even your Lord said, even your best work, even your best thing, you helped Granny cross the street a hundred times this month, even your best work still is as filthy rags to the Lord. I want to uh, share with you about the blood and what that means, the blood of Jesus. So what we got here is Leviticus. We're going to go to the Old Testament law, and we're going to kind of see what they did with some of the blood. 
in Leviticus 17:11 it says for the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul see this scripture speaks of the blood uh, blood of animals which were sacrificed to temporarily cover uh, sins it was an atonement it would cover um, the sins of the people for the previous year so uh, the best animal had to be taken in and you know sacrificed and and that bloodshed God would look down and it'd be enough to be an atonement to cover them okay but Lord basically showing um, all the people through through the Bible times and, and even through our time that man can't save himself you know they, they had to have blood it says without the remission of uh, Without the uh, without bloodshed, there's no remission of sins. You know, it says, uh, for the wages of sin is death. You know, so something had to be played. You know, it had to be paid for our sins, and, and and we we can't do it. We can't do it. Nothing. None of our good good works and our tithing. None of our nothing. And we can give our whole house away, but if we hadn't trusted Jesus, then we we missed the we missed the boat. Um. We'll go now over to Hebrews, and this is going to talk about how Christ paid it all. Hebrews 9, 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Jesus' blood didn't atone for our sins no more, but rather it took them away, it paid for them all, took them away forever. When you trust on the Lord Jesus Christ, your sins are gone. Now, we still sin according to the flesh but our spirit that's sealed we're sealed and that spirit man no longer sins he's he's the sins of, of paid for done it, it took him away forever hebrews 9 24 through 26 i'm going to read these right here uh all three and then we're going to talk about some of them for christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands which are the figures of the true but unto heaven itself now to appear into the pre in in the presence of God for us that's huge now to appear in the presence of God for us nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood with the blood of others with blood of others for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself so now to appear in the presence of God for us. So when we're sealed with the Holy Spirit, we've trusted the Lord Jesus Christ with our, our soul. Said That's the only way I can go, Lord. You're it. You ain't nothing I can do good that's going to get me there. Well, when God the Father looks down and, and you know, um, for the wages of sin is death, he, he's already paid it. He just sees the blood of Jesus. You know, without bloodshed, there's no remission of sins. He just sees the blood of Jesus. Okay, so you're no longer condemned to hell once you're saved. I like this is a good thing, uh, kind of to go with that as far as uh, it's an Exodus when Moses and the Israelites are in Egypt and they're trying to get out of Egypt, but Pharaoh won't let them out. So they, uh, the God started sending plagues, and this is on the tenth plague, Exodus twelve twenty three. It says, "For the Lord will pass through and smite the Egyptians, and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door." And will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. See, it was a plague where it was going to, uh, the death angel basically was going to come in and take the firstborn. And, uh, but, but in the middle of that passage, or the beginning of that passage, it says, And when he seeth the blood, when he seeth the blood, he was going to pass over. So when he sees that blood, I mean, I know that was for the Israelites, but still everything is made, uh, all the scriptures for doctrine, proof, correction. Um, and, and for learning and so that's a good application when God looks down and sees that blood there's something to that blood you know so Colossians 1 14 it says in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin so um, that's a uh, uh, RH our Apostle Paul uh, right there in whom we have that redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins you know there's a lot of a lot of uh, confusion out there. A lot of things that people say you got to do to get saved or to stay saved. That's that's a big one. Everybody got to stay saved. But I want to show you a uh, 
a great way to look at this thing. And it and it's really answers answers about everything. It really does. Now we're going to learn uh, and read about Jesus when he's on the cross. And some of you heard the story. Some of you may not have heard the story. But it's not a story. It's the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. But it's the story of the two thieves. And I say thieves, but they're called malefactors. Malefactors, uh, according to the uh, from uh, the King James, is is evildoers. They were bad people. So we got right here. We got the Lord Jesus Christ, and we're going to say yes, grace, perfect picture of grace. And I don't know which side it doesn't say, but we're going to take this one here, and we're going to say he was lost, which he was, and this one. Got saved right in the nick of time. We're going to turn to Luke 23. There goes my pen. Luke 23, 39 through 43. This is Jesus dying on the cross for our sins and the two malefactors beside him. These were two men that were no good. They were evil doers. I mean, when the Roman Catholics say you're no good, uh, you're you're pretty pretty much toast because I mean, they were some rough dudes. And so you to, to get crucified for the Romans and you wasn't a Christian uh, and you wasn't uh, you was on their team and for them to still say you did not deserve to live, they were some bad dudes. So needless to say, these, these guys uh, never never did nothing for the Lord. All right. If I can get 23, Luke 23, verse 39. We're just going to start right here in the, the, the good part of it. Verse 39 says, And one of the malefactors, which is hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. So this, this guy over here is, is saying, If you be Christ, why don't you save yourself and save us? But the other, this guy over here, but the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost thou dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. So this guy's telling this guy over here, I mean they're they're hanging there and they're I guess they're yelling back and forth at each other, and this guy uh, he says he says, we, we're getting what we deserve, man. He says, you know, we know what we did, and we, we was bad people. But this guy in the middle, he's done nothing wrong, and they're still killing him. And what he says next is, is amazing. And he says, uh, and he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, verily I say unto thee, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Right there, that man got saved. He just believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and got saved. You say, well, how, how do you know he got saved? Well, it said, the Lord said, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And uh, some people might say, well, where's paradise? Well, paradise, according to 2 Corinthians 12, 4, Paul says, how that he caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Paul was called up to the third heaven and called it paradise. We know paradise is heaven. Now, we know when Christ died, he went down and set the captives free. He descended before he ascended. He set the captives free, but he was with the Lord in paradise. That man got saved right then. Right then. This man wasn't baptized by pouring, sprinkling, or full immersion. He could not fulfill the five basic principles of Mormonism. He could not go out and sell watchtowers for Jehovah. He could not call a pope up and confess his sins. He could not sit cross-legged for uh, Muhammad. I mean, not Muhammad, for um, who's the other? Buddha. He could not sit cross-legged for Buddha. He could not go blow up a restaurant for Muhammad. He could not do anything. He couldn't tithe enough to make it to a secret uh, meeting or secret uh, luncheons. He could not uh, give enough. He could not do one single good deed, but believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put his faith, his hope, his trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's all he did. He got saved just like that. It's, uh, you know, people put so many, so much emphasis on on so many things and, and bring the confusion, you know. And when you interpret scripture with scripture and you really look at that thing rightly divided, man, it's, it's such a, a an amazing feeling and sight 
to, to be able to look through the scriptures. And now there's some things that still, you, you know, we have to study harder on. And, and But the, the big picture of who God's talking to and when is he talking to him? You know, who, who is, is God talking to you? And he appointed Paul to be the apostle to the Gentiles. Paul wrote books, Romans through Philemon. And, uh, you know, he, he had some stuff in Acts and and, uh, and some people say uh, the Hebrews, but the Hebrews was to the Hebrews uh, for the most part, you know. But the direct book straightly, you know, straight to us was Romans through Philemon. But Paul always went to the Jew first, then to the Gentile. So even through those scriptures and those books, you got to see who, who, who was the Lord using Paul to talk to, you know, and how, who's, the, who's the Lord talking to. So when you can figure out that and see how to rightly divide, the clarity comes in and it just all comes together. Um, I'm so thankful for the people that's, that's been put in my life and, and able to see um, more clearly than I used to. And because I know what it's like to be confused. I do know what it's like to not um, to want to understand. But you just you get tired of 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 looking almost. It's like, man, it just gets overwhelming. And that's not of God. God is not the author of confusion. So, um, you know, I, I would love to uh, to help uh, if I can. I don't know. I don't know everything for sure. Uh, there's a whole bunch I want to I want to keep studying and learn. I know just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit. And it's, it's enough to to keep me busy trying to uh, just it keeps me excited, man. I really love studying God's word. And it's just always been a been a uh, been an exciting thing, you know, just to see with everything going on in the world right now. I mean, we truly are in the last days, and it's uh, it's scary talking to some people that you know really they they it's kind of they almost it's kind of a mix between atheist and you know just not really care, don't really care, you know. And there's a lot of people who just don't care no more, and uh, it's a shame because uh, one day everybody will care, you know, every knee will bow and confess that Lord Jesus Christ is King of Kings. And um, Galatians two sixteen, you know, uh, this whole this whole picture here is great. It answers so many so many questions. You know, people say you got to be baptized. Well, this guy wasn't baptized. You know, I mean, just on and on and on. He just believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. So apparently, salvation is grace through faith. It's the gift of God. Galatians two sixteen, knowing that a man is not justified by works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Now so what's that mean? You know, is so now if we just say then it doesn't matter what we do, we can just go out here and do anything we want. Well, grace is like this. Grace is your sin has been paid for. But there's a difference between can and should. Can you go out and do what you want to do? Yeah, you can. Should you? No, you shouldn't. Uh, we all still sin. Yeah, I, 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 you're going to sin. I mean, it's just um, until the Lord calls us up and we're perfected, we're, we're still in the world. And this flesh still wants the world. And so you're only half saved. Your soul and your spirit are saved. Uh, I erased it, but that's sealed. Your soul and your spirit are saved. But this flesh, this flesh, this physical, it still wants the world. It still wants the world. And so, uh, yeah, you're going to sin. And, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's not a salvation issue. And that's what a lot of people get tripped up on. Well, I still desire this or I still desire that or I'm still doing this. Well, you just get into God's word and let him convict you and you let him it says every man work out work out your own salvation let the lord convict you of those things you know and and you know there's a difference between breaking fellowship and breaking and, and losing salvation once you're sealed you're sealed for eternity see like when i have my kids my daughters and uh they get in trouble right they get in trouble they, they deliberately do something i just told them not to do you know they're going to go do it and uh not all the time but they do have the occasions where they just they just want to test daddy, I guess, today, you know. And so what they do is they, they go out here and they do what I told them exactly not to do. And I never stop loving them. I'm going to love them uh, their whole life, whether they, some reason they end up never want to be around me or, or whatever it is. I'm going to always love them kids, you know, my, my girls. And we may lose fellowship until they come and say, daddy, I'm sorry. You know, I did wrong. 
Well, then we see we broke that fellowship, but we didn't broke that, break that love. And so that's the way the Lord is with us. See, you're saved and you're, you're signed, sealed, delivered. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's there. But we can break fellowship. And there's a lot of things a Christian can lose. You can lose a lot of rewards in heaven. It says, lay your riches up in heaven. He says, where your heart is, that's where your treasure will be also. So, you know, you can lose a lot of things on this earth living just how you want to live. But you can't lose salvation if you're truly saved. And, you know, when you when you get saved, uh, there should be some type of fruit that bears, that, that at least want to want to do something for the Lord, but they, I'm not saying that, that that if they're not producing fruit that you're not saved. I don't know them. The Lord knows your heart. You know, he knows if you're saved or not. But you got to trust, trust the gospel from your heart and uh, not your head. But restore that, that fellowship. So you come to the Lord and say, Lord, I know you've been convicting me of that, you know, and I, I know I kept on doing it. I kept on doing it my way. Did the old Frank Sinatra, did it my way. And uh, but you come to the Lord and, and you restore that fellowship. You get back on track with the Lord, and you say, "Okay, Lord, I'm giving it up. You know, let's. I, I miss you. I want to get back to talking, just like your kids come back to you. I want to. I want to get back. You know, I'm sorry, Daddy. You know, and and so that's a difference. You know, a lot of times preachers uh, are, are a lot of times uh, maybe some of your friends or your family members are try to scare you and say, "Well, you must not have really been saved." You know, well, if you'd really trusted the gospel and with your heart. And uh, you're, you're saved and sealed. But you might have lost that fellowship. Another good example would be like, like say, my hand here. This right here is a real tender area. So if I took a needle and I just touched, just touched right here, it would hurt real bad. You know, I could feel it. The nerve endings are right there. But up here, I got some calluses. Okay, I got some calluses. And so if I touch that same needle right here, it don't hurt no nearly as bad. See, what happens is when the Lord convicts us of a sin... Uh, that we're doing in our life because he wants us uh, closer to him, a closer walk, just a closer walk with the, you know, when we, we want to get closer to the Lord, he starts convicting us and convicting us, convicting us. When we kept sinning and we kept doing the same thing that the Lord told us not to do over and over and over, we built calluses around that sin. So when we do it, it don't hurt as bad. You know, we go, ah, oh, it's okay, it's okay, you know, it don't really, you know, because it don't really convict you. And the Lord let that happen, you know, just, you want to keep on ignoring them? Well, then it'll just get a callus. Well, what, what we got to do is we got to, it says, Paul says, uh, die, you know, die into the flesh and you got to renew your mind daily and you rip that callus off. So it goes right back to here. It's just a, just a touch and it hurts again, you know, and, uh, staying in the word and we're all guilty of it. I know I am at least, uh, you know, I, I'll get to studying sometimes and then I'll blink and I got a week, two weeks, a month go by and, uh, you know, I hadn't even prayed, you know, much. And uh, it's just, it's it's uh, it's the delusions of the of the world, and uh, you know, it says in Second Corinthians four four, it says, which we read earlier, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. The God of this world is Satan. You know, he's 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 in control of the higher ups. Uh, the government, you know, he's running his plan and he's using different people to make his plan happen. And uh, and so it's 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 a real deal. The gospel again is first Corinthians fifteen, one through four, and um, it's believing from the heart. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of, what, of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. The world has been blinded by religion. That's why, unfortunately, a lot of people are going to be going to hell if they don't get saved and they don't get right. If you attach anything to Christ but Christ alone, uh, you need to... You're not, you're not saved. You know, it's it's you can't. It's Christ plus nothing. It's Christ alone. And so any there's no work. If he if you can earn it, then why did he die? You know, if you can earn it in any type of way. How did how did why did he die? This man right here believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and got saved. I hope uh, it was a blessing to somebody. Like I said, I'm I don't know all of it by any means. But uh, I just I do desire if there is some people out there that wants to know more. Um, I, you know, I love talking to people about it and that'd be a blessing just to be able to, to 
return the favor of what many men did for me growing up and guiding me and, and teaching me the right way. And I'm just thankful. And uh, I hope everybody has a great day. And don't wait too long before you give your life to the Lord. Amen. Mm-hmm. <laughs>